finished project should be a source of pride and satisfaction to you as a craftsman in wood. The construction of a beautiful and useful article depends upon a knowledge and skill in the use of several basic tools, among which are the hand saws. A saw is used in cutting the various pieces to size, in cutting the various joints by which the pieces are joined together. In many ways, the final appearance and quality of your project will depend upon your skill with a hand saw. The parts of a saw are the handle, the blade, the teeth, the back of the blade, the toe, and the heel. The cross-cut saw is used to saw across the grain of wood. There are coarse and fine cross-cut saws. Those for ordinary use have about eight points to the inch. The teeth of a cross-cut saw are set or bent alternately right and left so that the cut made by the saw is wider than the blade. This keeps the blade from binding or sticking in the cut. The cut made by any saw is called the kerf. The cutting action of cross-cut saw teeth is like that of a series of tiny knife points cutting across the grain of the wood. Before attempting to use a cross-cut saw, make sure that it is sharp and that the teeth are properly set. Mark the stock clearly using a square and a sharp pencil. Mark the edge of the stock as well as the face. Short pieces may be sawed in a vise, long pieces on sawhorses. Start with the heel of the saw on the far side of the stock. Grasp the saw firmly with the index finger extended along the saw. The teeth should be alongside the mark so that the kerf will be in the waist stock. Guiding the saw with your thumb, pull it toward you once or twice. Be careful that the saw does not jump out of the kerf and cut your thumb. Begin to saw with short strokes, increasing the length of the stroke as you saw. It's a good idea to check the position of the saw with a tri-square to be sure it is being held upright. The cross-cut saw should be held at approximately 45 degrees with the stock. Saw with long, even strokes. The saw should be held at your side, in line with your shoulder. Do not force or bend the saw. Keep your eye on the line rather than on the saw. Blow away the sawdust from time to time so you can see the line. If the kerf should stray away from the mark, you can straighten it by taking short strokes and slightly twisting the saw handle. Take the final strokes slowly. Hold the projecting piece in one hand so that the weight of it does not cause the stock to split. Long pieces can best be sawed using two sawhorses. Make your cut outside the sawhorses. The wrong way is to saw between sawhorses. Your weight bends the stock, pinching the saw in the kerf. This is the right way. When sawing a board with the grain, use a rip saw. Rip saw teeth are set alternately left and right, but are filed straight across, while the crosscut saw above is filed at an angle. Rip saw teeth are usually larger than crosscut teeth. As rip saw teeth move through the wood, they act as a series of tiny chisels, cutting away bits of wood with each stroke of the saw. You may support the work with sawhorses or a vise. Start by carefully drawing the saw toward you. Take short strokes at first, gradually increasing their length. The saw should be held at an angle of about 60 degrees with the stock, a steeper angle than when cross-cutting. Use long, even strokes. 
Do not force the saw. The kerf may tend to close and pinch the saw. This can be remedied by inserting a small wedge in the end of the kerf to keep it from closing. A back saw crosscut saw with fine teeth used for accurate work. Since the blade is very thin, it has special reinforcing along the back to keep the blade from bending. In marking stock to be sawed with a back saw, be sure to use a finely sharpened hard pencil or a knife. An ordinary pencil is not accurate enough. Start with the middle of the saw blade. Using the thumb as a guide, carefully draw the saw toward you. The teeth should be beside the mark so that the kerf will be in the waist piece. As you saw, lower the handle until the saw is parallel with the board, being careful to keep the saw perpendicular to the work. At the end of the cut, take shorter, lighter strokes. Be sure to hold the loose end on the last few strokes to keep the wood from splitting. A miter saw is a back saw 18 to 30 inches long used in a miter box. The box serves as a guiding frame for the saw, making it easier to saw at any desired angle. The same principles apply to using the miter saw as to using the back saw. The coping saw has a narrow removable blade and is useful for cutting curves in thin stock. For work supported in a vise, the teeth should point away from the handle. Lay out the desired curve with a pencil. Saw with short, quick strokes. You will probably want to cut slightly outside the penciled outline to allow for trimming. To change direction, take short strokes, slightly twisting the saw in the new direction. Make no attempt to move forward while changing direction. When sawing an inside curve, bore a hole large enough to insert the saw blade. Put the blade through the hole, reassemble the saw, and then proceed. When supporting the work with a V block, the saw teeth should point toward the handle. Saw with a quick up and down motion, being careful to hold the saw blade vertical. A compass saw is used for sawing curves in thicker stock. Its blade tapers to a point. In using the compass saw, take short, quick strokes, twisting the saw slightly to follow the curves. A keyhole saw is a small compass saw, originally designed for sawing keyholes. It is used in the same way that the compass saw is used. For safety and good work, your saw must be sharp and properly set. Keep it that way. After each day's use, wipe your saws with an oily cloth to keep them bright and free from rust. Hang saws in a safe place so that the teeth will not be damaged or dulled by knocking against other tools. The hand saws are among the most basic of woodworking tools. The correct use of them is necessary for any project, no matter how simple or how complicated. Learn to use them. They will serve you well.